In these problems, we're working with some of the relationships that happen when you have lines that cross a circle and intercept arcs. Um, in this first one, we have a relationship that happens between the angle of two secant lines, um, the angle they form, and the arcs that get intercepted here. And actually, you see two secant lines here. This same formula works if the line, both lines were tangent, or if one was tangent and one was secant. We'll see that in another problem in just a minute. But let me show you the formula, the relationship that exists here. This angle, let's call it angle P, so the measure of angle P is going to be one half of the large part of the arc that gets intercepted. So from this one, that would be the measure of DF, oops, arc, DF, minus the little angle, or the little arc that gets intercepted here. So BH, so the measure of arc BH. So big arc minus the little arc half of that is that angle. That's the relationship that exists there. In this problem, we're being asked to find the measure of angle FPD. That is this angle, FPD, yeah. And let's see, we're told that arc BD is 108. Arc DF is 98. Oh good, we need that one. That's the big arc. And arc FH is 134, so this business down here is 134. And I guess we need to find BH here, the other arc we need, the little one, by subtracting all of these from 360. So 360 minus 108 minus 98 minus 134. And let's see, that is going to equal 20, I think. So BH right here, that's 20. Now we can just plug these values into our formula. DF is 98, so we've got the measure of angle FPD equals one half of 98 minus 20, the big arc minus the little arc. So that's one half of 78, which is 39. So the measure of FPD equals 39 degrees. So that's all there is to that one. Let's look at another situation here. Here we have a circle and two chords that intersect somewhere in the circle we're being asked to find the angle here. So this might remind you of situations where you have uh, a central angle, and you know the central angle uh, is the same as the arc length that it intercepts. And an inscribed angle, one that starts all the way at the back, is twice that. Here, to figure this out, this doesn't um, intersect in, the, in the, these two lines don't intersect in the center necessarily. Um, they don't start from back here. The, the way this relationship works is that that angle, which is actually going to be the same as this angle, right, because this is a vertical pair, is going to be the average of this arc length and this arc length. So it, we're being told AB is 35 and CD is 71. So the average there would be, so X equals one half of 35 plus 71. And let's see, 35 plus 71 is going to be 106, so half of that is 53 degrees. So that's how to figure out the angle there uh, of two intersecting chords. Let's look at one more problem. This one's slightly more complicated. And the first chunk that we've got going on here, we're being asked to find this arc X that goes from here to here. And you, you probably will recognize this as something similar to the first problem we did, except we've got one tangent line and one secant line, but the formula is still the same. So in this case, the measure of angle A would be one half of the big arc minus the little arc. The big arc is BC, so BC minus, oops, arc, BC minus this one, X. And they're giving us the measure of angle A, and they're giving us the measure of BC, so we can simply plug those in and solve for X. That's the first step. We have to figure out how to solve for y up here too, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So, measure of angle A is 34, and that equals one half of, and measure of arc BC is 100 minus x. And I think at this point what I would do is just multiply both sides of the equation by two to get rid of that one half. I don't want to deal with fractions if I don't have to. So that 68 equals 100 minus x, and that would be uh, negative 32 after I subtract 100 equals negative x or x equals 32. All right, so we've got half of this done. Now, let's look up here. So this is 32, this is 100, and then we want to figure out the 
a measure of angle y. And you might remember from a previous uh, piece of work that when you have a tangent line to a circle and a secant line, the angle that they form, it's going to be the same relationship with its arc as um, uh, an inscribed angle. So this y is going to be one half of this arc length. So y equals one half of the arc length from here to here. So let's call that, well, we don't have a point here. Let's put one in. D, uh, one half of the measure of arc CD. So we need to find arc CD. Well, how do we do that? Well, we subtract from 360. We've got this portion. That's 100. This portion is 32. So 360 minus 132 is going to be 228. And then we'll take half of that and we get 114 degrees for y. So that's a little bit of work with the relationship between lines, secant lines and tangent lines that intersect circles and their intercepted arcs and angles.